Today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite Sword and Shield era set. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be Fusion Strike. We're going to go over a little bit of the analytics. We're going to go over the data. And I'm going to, you know, try to justify my case and why you should invest in some of the cards but first things first welcome back to the third installment of thirsty thursdays this one is not brought to you by barefoot's fruit scotto you know why because strawberry is my favorite hopefully they're watching if you want a cheap buzz baby after a long week or school whatever your occupation may be hey go to your store spend 9.99 get you some fruit scotto ah you know, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time because over the years, you know, Fusion Strike has gotten a lot of negative attention because it was the set right after Evolving Skies and everyone loved it. And then Fusion Strike came out and everyone was like, oh, this is abysmal. Pull rates are trash. The cards aren't even good. There's no evolutions. There's no Dragon Knights and Rayquazas. Whatever the collector, the player, your everyday person or everyday people that just come into the hobby on a daily basis. But I kind of want to justify the set and prove why I feel like Fusion Strike will perform very well in the coming years. So there's going to be three objectives that we're going to cover in today's episode. And the first one being understanding the pull rates. Now, if we come over here, this is Pokemon TCG's Reddit page. And they did their overall analysis on a 4,100 and some odd pack opening. All right. Most of the packs came from booster boxes, but then they had some of the packs come from elite trainer boxes. So right here, I have it highlighted the fusion strike pull rate data. So the overall hit rate, that's anything that is an ultra rare B or better. You kind of saw those coming every 4.3 to 4.8 packs. Kind of reasonable, kind of, I agree with that to an extent. Again, I'm not opening 4,000 packs in one sitting. I'm opening maybe a booster box at most. But now we're going to step into the ultra rare Vs. Off their analysis, they're saying anywhere from seven to eight packs, you should be seeing a ultra rare V come out of whatever product you may be opening. Again, elite trainer boxes have eight packs. Unless you buy the Pokemon Center exclusive, they have 10 packs. You should at least see one ultra rare V. And again, we all can kind of agree that majority of the times that does happen. And then in a booster box, what? Maybe five to six Vs you should see. And again, I've had booster boxes that have had five Vs, six Vs, and a full art. Depending, again, when you're picking onesies and twosies from sealed product, it this is not going to substantiate you know, your personal opinion on it. Again, you have to open in mass quantity. And this is kind of just a overall analysis of what it should look like but now if we step into the ultra rare v maxes these are just the standard ones you should see one coming out every 24 20 or you know we'll just round up every 25 to 34 packs you should be seeing a v max come out of whatever product you should be opening every regular full art you should be seeing 29 to 40 packs so somewhere within that threshold so again you should see one full art per booster box does that happen no now we're going to look at the alternative art v's all right this is not including the v max secret rares all right so every 79 to 148 packs all right that's a big gap all right again that's a big gap i don't know if that's quite statistical or that's a proper ratio you should be giving because what that's a 60 pack difference so that's almost what almost two booster boxes worth the difference i i don't know if that should be that open so every 79 to 147 packs you should be seeing an alternate art v come out of your booster box or if you've opened up a case of etbs you should be seeing at least one alternate art v gold secret rares every 86 to 167 packs Again, a gold secret rare should come out. The rainbow secret rares to include the Pokemon and uh, your gym supporters or your rainbow trainers. Every 91 to 179 booster packs, one of these rainbow secret rares should be coming out. So now we're moving to the alternate art VMAX secret rare. And they're saying that there is a 0.35 average out of 4,000. 197 packs only 14 
15 were pulled. So the Gengar VMAX alternate art, they pulled 0.13%. The Inteleon VMAX alternate art was 0.08%. The View uh, Mu VMAX alternate art was 0.08%. And the Espeon VMAX alternate art at a whopping 0.05%. So out of those 14, they saw more Gengars than the Espeon VMAX alternate, which, you know, kind of really blows my mind. Because in my time of opening Fusion Strike, I have indeed pulled the Espeon VMAX alternate art. I have not pulled the Inteleon VMAX. I have not pulled the Mew VMAX and the Mew V. The only alternate arts that I have from Fusion Strike are indeed the Espeon VMAX and that Celebi V alternate art. So seeing a lot of these numbers, again, I've been following Fusion Strike for a while and I was trying to make the best decision based upon me. So now I'm gonna help enlighten y'all, the viewers a little bit, and we're gonna kind of go over the value of Fusion Strike sealed product. And this leads us to objective number two, and that's understanding your financial boundaries when investing in Fusion Strike. So on our screen, we have the TCG player pulled up. And again, we have the pull rate for Fusion Strike up. And right now the market price for a Fusion Strike booster box is right now, averaged at $128.54. And if we look at the growth over the last month, so January 3rd, you could pick up a booster box for about $120. And now it is at $128.54. So again, we'll just round up to $129. That is a $10 gain in just a month. And that the reasoning being is a lot of this products being cracked open because a lot of people are in search of some of these iconic alternate arts because again as we all know gen 9 coming out the alternate art spectrum is no longer going to be there they're going to have the art rares but your typical v alternate art v max alternate art all that's being phased out because ex pokemon are coming back in so again with the ten dollar gain over the month a lot of people are cracking products searching for these alternate arts because again in the years to come there's going to be people filtering into this hobby new people come in every single day a lot of people didn't have the pleasures of opening fusion strike so a lot of people missed out on the thrill of the hunt for some of these v max secret rares and some of these just regular v alternate arts so again when you're buying fusion strike now you kind of got away your odds of okay hey prices are going up for single cards sealed products are going up so what is the financial goal that you're trying to accomplish here or what is your left and right limits so in my personal opinion and the reason why i'm just going to buy in singles now because listen out of 4197 packs so that is a equivalent of 20 cases so if i were to buy 20 cases that would put me at a fifteen thousand six hundred dollar deficit for what to pull 14 cards that ultimately won't even give me 10% of my value back. So that's where you got to really assess and understand what it is you're trying to accomplish when it comes to investing in Pokemon. Because if you just come in and you start buying product, buying product, buying product, listen, that Gengar VMAX alternate art is going to take years and years and years for it to ever reach a price worth of maybe 10 to 20% of your initial investment into that card. And this is why this hobby can get so expensive because if you don't come in with a plan or you come in with an idea of what it is you're trying to do, whether that be a seal collector, a individual collector, a player, I mean, you can do a mix of both, but like I said, if you're just trying to chase a card and spend all this money, you're not gonna see the ROI that you really wanna see. So the focus on objective two is understanding your financial limits is basically broken down to me personally, I'm not spending $15,600 on 20 boost or 20 cases of Fusion Strike booster boxes in hopes to pull the Gengar VMAX alternate art or any of those other VMAX seeker rares. Because again, that is just off their 
analysis i could do the same and i could not even pull a gengar i cannot pull the inteleon i cannot pull the espion i can't pull the mew it's all gonna vary depending on what it is you buy now what i have hopes after opening up almost 4200 packs i would get a gengar yes but again you could not so that's why now we're gonna dive into objective number three and that being just buy the cards you want so here in front of us we have the top 10 most expensive cards from fusion strike and holding it down at number 10 is my spirit animal the chonky squirrel the greed and v alternate art and it is at a price point of 14 dollars 44 now again let's pull up the pull rates to get an alternate rv every 78 to 148 booster packs so that's going to put you anywhere from the threshold of two to almost a case worth of booster boxes so again a case is running at like 744 dollars that's gonna put you right there at what not even what one percent of what this would cost you to buy right now versus what you would have to spend in order to pull this card in hopes actually to pull this card now we're going to number nine and that is going to be the mu v regular full art and this one holding a good price at 16 dollars pretty much we're not going to add the four cents that's ridiculous 16 dollars and again if we go back to the pull rates to pull a regular v full art it's anywhere from 29 to about 40 packs so hypothetically you could see a mu v full art come from a booster box but again how many other full arts are there in this set you're not even guaranteed the mu so now again you're gonna have to be spending amples and just unrealistic amount of money in hopes to find this card when you can just go out there and buy it for 16 dollars now listen i know we all have an itch we all have that gambling addict that thrill of the hunt to crack a pack and see a banger pull like this to come through but sometimes you know you got to be more smart about your spending because you know pokemon's not going to stop printing you know what i'm saying and a lot of us find ourselves in positions where dang we can't afford it the next set that came out or oh man they're launching these tens on this day because we're spending so much money chasing these cards now it's cool to open a booster box here a booster box there but to spend too much time i have the golden rule of three booster boxes if i can't pull my chase card after three booster boxes then i'm probably just gonna go out and buy it because at the end of the day i can spend an arm and a leg and sell a kidney and still not pull the card that i'm chasing so that brings us back to number eight and that is gonna be our break dancing boy genesect v which is a highly playable card as well and that's why you see the market significantly jump for this alternate art and now it holds it down at around 27 dollars and again with the v alternate arts you're looking anywhere from that two to a case looking for a regular v alternate art number seven we have james bond inteleon v max alternate art secret rare and this one is holding it down at 29 dollars and two cents now some of y'all are like how in the is this card only 29 dollars when again to get a alternate art v max secret rare you have a 0.35 percent average out of four thousand pretty much 200 booster packs you only have a 0.35 percent chance of pulling it and that's because guess how many people are opening this set a bunch of people are opening this set there's a lot of cards out there in circulation not only in japanese but you got it in english so that's why the price is not that high and again inteleon probably not a, a sought after card not an iconic pokemon it's only been around for what this generation that the sword and shield era so it hasn't built a lot of momentum like some of our kanto some of our johto pokemon that get alternate arts but moving on to number six the celebi v alternate art the one cool cherry and orion is still in search of luckily we pulled it uh i couldn't tell you what we pulled it from i think it was like uh like a pokeball tin or one of the tins that had fusion strike i'm not 100 percent sure but this one has a market price of 33 dollars and again 
I'm not going to beat a dead horse. And it's going to take you anywhere from two to six booster boxes in order to pull a alternate art V. So let's go to number five again. Now, again, there's already been some videos put out there, but rainbow rares are going away in Scarlet and Violet. So I am personally trying to collect as many rainbow rares as I can just due to the fact new people come to the hobby. There are going to be people that are specifically only after rainbow rares. So I'm going to make the assumption that in the coming years, rainbow rares are going to see a very high surge in price just due to them not producing them anymore. And quite frankly, I think they're beautiful. Do they kind of do justice against the normal arts? No, but it's still a secret rare in you know, the eyes of collectors and it still brings justice to the card and like for Mew VMAX, one, mythical legendary Pokemon, two, highly playable in the TCG format. Again, rotations are going to happen, so we might not see it for too much longer, but it's a very playable card. It had a lot of, you know, momentum within the TCG scene and that's why the price point is at $36 for this one. So now we're going to move on to the Mew V alternate art. Again, playable card. That's why you see that price point at about $48 for this one. And it's also been around since, what, Kanto? All right, so OG Pokemon, OG Legendary, the original Legendary, along with the, or along with the birds. So, again, that's why you'll see some of these cards outperform a lot of these newer introduced Pokemon. And then at number three, we got the Mew VMAX secret alternate art and that is at 86 dollars and 47 cents i know i said i wasn't going to do it so 87 dollars the mu v max is holding it down again playable card in the format you didn't see it a lot because people couldn't pull the daggum thing <laughs> and then we got number two the espion v max alternate secret rare again i pulled this one you have a 0.05% chance out of 4,200 booster packs of pulling this card. And that's why you see it at $167. And it's just because it's an evolution. And who doesn't love evolution? Gen 2, Pokemon, Johto, region area. It's, and one, it's just a beautiful card. Again, little Timmy Sally forgot to put it in Evolving Skies. And they were like, hey, don't worry, boss. We're going to put it in Fusion Strike. Don't worry. I know. I messed up. Don't fire me. But that's why you see this card here. And again, it's a beautiful card. Sleepy Espeon. I mean, what, what's not to love about this card? But now, the number one most expensive card is the Gengar VMAX Alternate Art. And that is holding it down at $172. Gengar OG Ghost Type Pokemon just ravaged the TV series. Always funny. And like I said, man, it's just an iconic card. And that's what it comes down to Pokemon Tour is like, you know, what is what is the iconic image of the Pokemon? Again, if it's a brand new one or one that's not really renowned, of course, it's not going to do as well as one of these, you know, main face or, you know, main gym leader type Pokemon or one that's in the competitive scene as playable. You're not going to see it perform really well. But again, Gengar was playable. In the TCG, it is a Kanto, you know, generation Pokemon. So there's always just a lot of hype behind it. But all in all, A, Fusion Strike is a good set. Don't buy into what people talk about it. Because again, a lot of people have been in the Pokemon hobby. They don't see a lot of value behind these cards. But like I said, man, alternate arts are going away. A lot of these alternate arts from the Sword and Shield era are going to be iconic, sought after. People are going to want them in their collection. I got it. There might be a lot in circulation right now, but there's going to be a lot more people surging into the hobby that don't have them and people don't want to sell them. And that's why we're going to see price points rise because a lot of them aren't selling. So now we don't have a, okay, hey, what is the listed median or what could be the listed median? How many are out there? How many are listed? So they're going to be all these factors weighing into when they actually calculate these prices and i would say probably within five years you could see a gengar v max alternate art raw going for anywhere like three four hundred dollars i can almost guarantee it because we're gonna have a new generation of pokemon 
A lot of people came into the hobby during Scarlet and Violet, missed out on Sword and Shield because prices were surged too high. They aren't able to open the product because they don't want to spend that much. And they're just going to buy the cards outright. So hopefully you got a little bit from today's video. Again, I'm trying to give better. I'm trying to, you know, enlighten a little bit of knowledge on the community. You know, put my two cents in, a little bit of my research in. They're going to give better. I'm expanding different topics to talk about on Thirsty Thursdays. But again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, hey, it is what it is. Flame me down in the comments section. But be sure you tell someone you love them today. It's Thursday. We're almost to the weekend. We got a live stream coming up. More Crown Zenith giveaways going on. And always, always remember, this is the way.